What's going on guys? I'm a little sick right now, but that's not stopping the RPS Nation because today we're going to be sound designing this sound. What's going on Rocket Parrot Sound Designers? Welcome to the best channel on YouTube for Serum Tutorials. Now, what do you say we just go ahead and jump straight into the video? Uh, first things first, we got Oscillator A and we got Oscillator B here. But before we choose our wavetables, just a little heads up, we are giving away five packs of wavetables for just $5. I've said in my other videos, you already know the deal. If you wanna grab those while you still can, link is in the description. Anyways, Oscillator A, we're gonna go ahead and jump on our BSOD square. So this isn't a square waveform per se, but this is a waveform that is basically squarified and sounds like a variation of a square waveform. Okay, perfect. First things first, we're gonna wanna turn on FM from B so we can start to intercept the signal. And now we need to turn on oscillator A so we can actually get that signal, drop the level down. That way there's no frequencies colliding here. Turn up the FM. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. Since it sounds cool, we're gonna go ahead and take our LFO number one and start to modulate up. Perfect. So into the LFO editor, all we wanna do is create a shape just like this, put it on trigger now, and then we're also gonna to wanna to put this on one fourth. We can just leave it there. And that's gonna be working just fine. Now the sound doesn't sound too clean right now, so we're gonna to wanna to drop the level down to zero and then modulate it back up with LFO one much cleaner okay so the sound sounds incredibly decent but it doesn't sound good whatsoever so what we want to do is turn up the unison up to 15 on both oscillator a and oscillator b and this is what's going to be giving it the rhythm effect but right now all 15 voices on both of these oscillators are playing at random times so we want to turn down the random phase to zero that way they're all starting at the exact same point in the waveform which creates a really cool effect which is literally every rhythm bass ever Cool, cool, turn up the detuning. And now for oscillator B, we need to actually choose the oscillator, which is gonna be in the basic shapes, and um, oops, we want a sawtooth waveform, just a basic sign. Okay, let's turn up the octave up too, and we can detune this a little bit more. Now you guys are starting to see how the sound is forming together, um, but we want to make it a little bit harmonic now guys keep in mind it's completely up to you whether you want oscillator b to be on plus one or plus two they are two different tones so i advise you to just go ahead and mess around with it in your own music so into the sync it sounds like it has a pretty nice tonality right here or tone i should say okay we'll leave it around 5.9 the beauty of the sync is we're literally just increasing the amount of sawtooth waveforms per cycle and it, it kind of increases the pitch and it sounds awesome. So go into the filter now and we're going to grab our high pass 24 because it's not a rhythm bass and if we don't have a high pass filter, am I right? Go ahead and take our LFO one and we're going to be modulating this up. The reason we use a high pass filter is because when we turn up the resonance, it kind of shapes it into a more vocal path. Turn up that drive now. Okay, now you're starting to see where we're coming from here. Into the effects section now, this is when things start to get fun. We can go ahead and make a vocalish sound by just turning on our down sample and the distortion. I like leaving it around 50% personally, but I created macros before that you can go ahead and modulate that. Um, anyways, we can go ahead and grab our filter now. The filter is going to be very important. We're gonna choose our reverb filter, but we're not gonna be using reverb filter the same way everyone on Dubstep Gutter uses reverb filter, which is in a bad way. We're gonna be using it in a good way. Go ahead and turn down the cutoff. Till we get right around here. Now hear that? It almost sounds like it's a little bit more metallic and really just industrial. And that's the way that we want the sound to process. So leaving the cutoff at around 77 hertz at a lower point, um, it kind of creates that extra metallic tail and it sounds awesome. Um, it's really gonna be brought out when we turn on our multiband compressor, which we can go ahead and turn on now. And it almost sounds like thrown elbows by space, laces, and excision. So that sounds cool. Okay, uh, go ahead and turn on our hyper slash dimension here. 
Very, very simple settings. Go ahead and turn on the mix all the way down to zero. And then size goes to around 2% and the mix goes to like 29% uh, for that. Perfect. Now finally, we can go ahead and put on a little bit of a delay here. Now the delay is gonna be used as a short delay to, um, you know, just kind of make it sound cool. So when we channel the uh, delay down to a very small amount, like we're gonna be doing, which is, I did around 17.70, sounds good. Um, and then we turn up the mix. Uh, it kind of creates a really cool metallic sound. What's happening is the sounds overlapping itself, but not super super fast, but just enough time to to the point where it creates a metallic effect. But instead, what we're going to be doing is we're going to select ping pong delay, which gives it a little bit more room to breathe on the stereo width, and it sounds fantastic. All right, finally, we can go ahead and just cut out the low end because we do have quite a bit of sub. And if you really want to get crazy, just modulate this to create a talking sound. And finally, I know I keep saying finally, but seriously, all we're going to do now is just turn on our Extra Records OTT, which is a 100% free plugin from Extra Records. And we can go ahead and mess around with the settings. Okay, one last point that we do want to do is go into our L or <laughs> go into our matrix, go ahead and grab LFO number two, go on to our global, have master tune turned on, and then we do just want to put this on trigger or envelope, I should say, and and well bam. That, my friends, is how we make a bass that's just like super, super unique, but it's really awesome in the rhythm community. And that's how you're gonna make your rhythm music stand out from everyone else. Of course, if you don't just copy this and you just kind of make it your own. But anyways, my name is Shane from Rocket Powered Sound and I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to click that like button. And if you haven't already, click that subscribe button because you're not, if you're not already subscribed, you're missing out on the best serum tutorials on YouTube. But anyways, my name is Shane from Rocket Powered Sound and I will catch you guys in the next serum tutorial.